Hello students. Today we will begin with a new module which is of mass communication. So in this lecture we will be dealing about the different aspects of mass communication studies. So basically in this module you will understand the pedagogy of mass communication studies. You'll also be familiarized with the different modules and techniques which goes into the studying and utilization of mass communication in real life. Then you will also be acquainted with the mass communication studies which happens in India and also the overall communication scenario in the Indian setting. So to begin with, today we will be basically dealing with what is communication. What is the use of communication as a social science? The use of communication along with language, the various rights to communicate, the definitions which goes from various schools about communication, the different types of communication, the intrapersonal communications, and the stages which goes into the interpersonal communication. So uh, we'll begin with what is communication. The origin of the word communication is Latin in nature. So communication basically comes from the Latin word communique, which means to share, to divide, to impart in form, to join, unite, participate and to make common. Now, what do you divide, what do you share, what do you impart and unite in communication? So basically, in communication, we share the information between two individuals or a group of individuals. We divide the knowledge input, that is, from the known to the unknown, we divide the knowledge then we impart the knowledge, whatever knowledge or insight that we gather during our communication process with the external world, we impart it to others. That is, for example, if I have learned a certain skill, I am imparting or sharing my knowledge to you all. So, in other words, there is an exchange of learning which is taking place through the impartion of it then you inform others what you know what you don't know uh, communication when it occurs through the various mediums could also imply the news which you get the main task of doing so is informing you about the whereabouts of the world then you join together to communicate a particular idea for example if you are protesting against something you join together as groups and you protest it so the joining the culmination would itself imply that you are getting hold of your ideas and dispersing your ideas to the overall medium at large then you participate in the knowledge process, you participate in the communication process, you participate in the exchange process. And when you do so, you make the ideas common. So when the ideas are common, then there is a generalization of ideas, there is a sharing of ideas, there is a documentation of ideas. So basically, when we define communication, Communication can be defined as the process in which people share ideas. Now, ideas can range from uh, scientific ideas to non-scientific ideas to anything which would aid into the further inquiry of knowledge. Then your experience, the experiences which you gather by undergoing a particular activity or a particular situation or the experiences which you have gained over a period of time that when you communicate 
to the other members of your society or your groups you tend to let them know not about what is the existing scenario but you also given newer insights on how to move forward from it so basically it is the sharing of knowledge whatever you gain whatever you do not gain you share then you get their feelings and the feelings could be uh, expressed through emotions the feelings could be uh, aggressive there could be many attributes attached to the feelings which you will express then they are again transmitted so transmission is the process where you let the process of information exchange to take place so basically you are identifying an idea you are sharing it with your other individuals and basically you form a symbolic relationship that entire process is known as the process of communication so the basic means of communication usually are spoken or written words pictures or symbols the spoken words are the words which we use in our day to day language certain languages do not have uh, the spoken language as such so they communicate with the help of codes or very sounds and clicks then uh, you have the written words so there's always a difference between the spoken language and the written language the spoken language is free as long as you are able to communicate your meanings properly your ideas properly the spoken language sells but written languages usually have their own script their own rules the grammar and everything which needs to be followed in order to be expressed in a particular written word then you have pictures or symbols so the symbols can be figures or signs that denote a concept for example uh, outside the hospital certain symbols would denote to keep quiet not to blow horns outside schools you have certain symbols which will tell you uh, to maintain the traffic the core up and so on and forth so what is happening is in doing so we are not only giving information through the body language the gestures the facial expressions but we are also denoting how we are feeling at that point of time for example a body language is very important indicator on what you are going to communicate so if i am in a slouchy position it means that i am simply being disinterested or if i am employing a positive body language you know that i am up to something good and so on the gestures are the symbols which you use via your hands for example if i am showing my palm movement twice probably i am asking you to stop if i am waving it probably i am asking you to let the thing pass by or probably i am simply waving you a goodbye so gestures are important for the exchange then your facial expressions now uh, you could have a smiley face where you smile so you let the person know that you are comfortable or happy or you are at a relaxed state of mind a frown could express your displeasure to what's the particular subject then on you have facial expressions which will show you the varied human emotions for example when you uh, have something sad and you twist your tongue and shake your head it implies that you are showing a sense of displeasure or disgust or when you too happy and your facial expressions tells me that you are unable to control your emotions because you might be probably fidgeting you might be very happy you might be not able to contain your smile so you give me sniffle giggles and all so facial expressions are also an important indicator for the same so basically the process of communication itself implies that you are 
passing a knowledge from a particular genre of information now that information goes through the processing of sharing the processing of impartial then information unity and participation in order to make the angle clear so it's basically an interactive process do so we have communication where we communicate with oneself which is the intrapersonal communication which will go into the later half of this class but then communication is either a two way process where uh participant 1 will communicate with participant b or participant 1 will communicate with the remaining 100 person of participants so in communication the ideas the knowledge the feelings and everything that you want to express is expressed symbolically now communication as a discipline is divided into the subsections now when we talk about communication or communication studies in terms of your syllabus in academia it is that component area of study which will include both formal academic as practical areas so basically in this module when we are talking about mass communication studies we will be dealing about the academic aspects of communication the writing aspect how you going to establish and document a particular flow of idea then you'll have the practical aspects for example professional communication how would you behave in a professional organization what it takes or entails to have a clear and lucid professional communication then you have media production as one unit where you see how media acts as the fourth pillar of democracy and it as as a watchdog it gets you the news it gets you important updates it helps in the dissemination of important ideas it helps in the critical evaluation of policies which are implemented by the government and central agencies then how it gives you an overall idea of the current scenario in the world then public speaking is a very important aspect in media studies we do have a uh, certain clubs like the postmasters club and all which will help you to make a example speech or to speak in a particular topic so these are the areas where we primarily base our communication so communication is not only limited to writing or a uh, dispersion of ideas via the help of digital and technical tools but it is wrapped into one common goal that is dispersion of any information and that information can take place either through writing either through media production through public speaking and so on so when we go basically into the academic study of communication the academic study of communication includes your language your communication media the culture and technology now language forms a very important role in communication which we'll discuss in the next slides but for all to know that the various aspects of a linguistic form of any language is essential because it is true that your communication is established then the media forms the crux through which the dissemination of the communication is taking place your culture and technology forms important modes of communication because it is through the a uh, presence of a particular stimulus are you getting responses in a particular culture that is being recorded via modes of communication and technology helps in the dispersion of those responses 
then you have media production of communication where you learn about radio television the film and the digital medium through which the communication is processed today you have fm radio channels who have taken the owners of them to update the people not only with the day to day current affairs but they also have important immediate information giving system like for example they give you traffic updates they give you weather updates along with looking after the leisurely aspect like they play songs or they do dramas then television is the important uh in separable aspect of mass media where through television it the as a medium it disseminates the entire branch of knowledge be it entertainment be it lifestyle be it movies news sports and so on then digital communication is essential because only through the means of digital communication the dissemination of knowledge takes place at a faster rate now then you have professional communications now professional communications can happen with the dispersion of certain ideas for example you have public relations uh, then in public relations for example you set up your company now launching a product and having it tested in the market you could do some amount of search but to enable the con the continuation of the product in the market and to seek customer satisfaction communication is essential to propagate your ideas into the mainstream market communication is essential so we have a separate branch for public relations where that branch technically looks after everything that a company is supposed to do it acts as a carrier between the company and the public and it also addresses the grievances and helps in maintaining a very uh, delicate and effective relationship then you have technical writing for example if you are launching a product the technical writing would look after aspects of web designing web content making so that with digital sem- uh, dissemination of knowledge you get a quicker dispersion of the ideas then you have professional writing now what happens in professional writing you are creating the content for that product for example if you are launching a stapler in a market the professional writer or the content writer would do the branding for you they would write the features of the stapler they would write the features along with the utilities the do's and don'ts and they will see that it gets promoted well in the market and they will see creative way in which your probably your stapler could be a better stapler than the existing ones in the market so these are the important aspects now again you have the sub branches that is that of rhetoric the art of speaking as total had brought about the one way rhetoric process where he said that the communication process is all about sending the message receiving the message decoding the message so then you have semiotics semiotics and then phenomenology is to know beyond the phenomenon then cybernetics is associated with all your cyberwares and all then the socio psychological tradition in any society what goes into the making of certain norms and taboos and the proper dissemination of the same then the socio cultural traditions which has been existing from a long period of time so that is also seen under the discipline of communication the socio cultural traditions are important because it gives you insight into how through the use of language you are seeing the traditions 
the stimuluses which are being able to produce certain responses so it gives you an idea of the society at large then you have the critical tradition where you critique the existing things which goes on in the society for example you do not comply with certain norms or dictums or totems which have been floating in the society so you have communication as a discipline with your ideas why you are against certain traditions why would you like to have an alternate tradition or why do you think that continuing this tradition is harmful for the overall benefit of the society you could easily disseminate through your technology radio film and digital communication along with your writings so these forms the important disciplines of communication at large then uh, this seven um traditions as it was divided by craig it's also known as the craig's list and this seven discrete traditions has another a uh, branch uh, another theories and all so you rhetoric itself is a theory semiotics is a theory then phenomenology is a huge branch they have somewhere around 250 theories Uh, which go or which refute or critique the existing traditions then you have the uh, various sub fields of scholarly and practical enterprise in communication so when we talk about communication we have interpersonal communication that is usually the communication between two persons then you have speech communication with certain speeches how you are able to give an idea now speech does not imply the long list of lectures which you will give but speech would also imply the processes which you make a human being to undergo so that there is a lucidity in the transformation of the ideas then you have media studies as a department at large which deals with your print your uh films your radios and televisions then you have intercultural communication the intercultural communications are necessary because when you conduct researches it is necessary to know why there is a situation of disparity or a situation of this uh um, situation of harmony in a particular culture the intercultural relationships will help you take out pockets within your world population and see how different cultures are able to assimilate and adapt with one another what are the shortcomings during the process of assimilation and adoption in intercultural communication it is essential that you understand and study the socio psychological behavior of individuals because that is where the crux of your society lies in so if there is a disturbance in your understanding of intercultural relationships it would have a direct impact in the policy making of the certain cultural pockets of the society international communication is essential because we know that we belong to one unipolar world but it is a diverse world with a huge amount of variety in it so international communication helps to ease the tensions between the existing international communities international communications are essential to create a cordial relationship between the members of the world at large now political economy of communication is essential because each economy is directly related to 
the political ongoings of a society so in order to make policies which are helpful for the socio economic and political development of a nation you need to disperse knowledge which would give you insight into the same then you have political communication the ruling parties the opposition parties what are they doing crores and crores of revenues are being utilized in the name of development are they able to do it or not who is accusing which party and so on so political communication is an important domain to know as a citizen what is going on in the part of the world that you reside in then you have media policies it is a relatively new branch earlier there were no policies governing media but now you do have a lot of media laws a lot of media policies so you you can exercise those rights and if you find that certain opinions are against you you may file cases of defamation slander libel on the person or these are essential to let you safeguard the essential rights then you have media history now media history is essential for you to know the evolution of media the evolution of communication from the days of your so probably if you are learning about aristotelian model of communication you should obviously be aware of the models of communication in the indian setting and so on so media history is an important domain then you have health communication now we see most of the doctors today engage in telephonic medicine dissemination now when you have a health communication you can give the medical care to people in the remotest parts of the country so in health communication if you are sitting in india you can still disperse your medical knowledge in rwanda so with the aid of medical uh, communication it has been possible now for people in remote areas to access the necessary medical interventions if and when necessary then you have organizational communication every company has its own hierarchy so if the uh manager is at a level so before the manager he will be reporting to the ceo and the director now below the manager there will be associate manager assistant manager supervisor then the foreman so that hierarchy is maintained for a smoother functioning of the organization now in organizational communication it is important to have the various hierarchical division because one person cannot look after thousands of needs of the organization so if the laborers need to communicate something they would go and communicate to the foreman the foreman if he cannot handle it at his level he communicates it to the supervisor if the supervisor cannot handle it in his level then it is his duty to go and inform it to the assistant manager likewise the assistant manager will report to the manager if he can ease it all out well enough if he can't then it goes on to the ceo and the directorial level then you have conflict resolution and med- mediation so in areas where terrorism is rampant or in areas where for certain reasons there are misunderstandings which occurs in communication you need mediators or peace makers to go understand the problem give a neutral solution so conflict management is an important discipline then you have visual communication the graphics that we use the animation the 3d technology the motion technology and everything through which you can 
go and contribute it to the society. Then you have public relations, the cordial relation which is maintained between the public and an organization. Then in technology studies, we nowadays use ICT. Now ICT methods are used, information technology is used for the dispersion of knowledge at a quick and handy pace. Then also you have journalists and media production houses who would take care of not only the reporting of your day-to-day -day activities and bringing you to light the information which are specifically going on, but media production houses will also look into matters of leisure, like they would have segments of entertainment, movies, uh, sports, then uh, regional segments and so on. Then basically in humanities we use communication in the disciplines of history, literature, language studies. For example, uh, we use it primarily in English. You have courses like Masters in English with Communication Studies because it is essential for a language which has been here since aeons, it is essential to know how the evolution has taken place of the society at large through that language. Then you have comparative literature, fine arts and classics. Then in social sciences, of course, economics, political science, sociology, anthropology, psychology, linguistics and philosophy uses communication by and at large. Now, why do we see communication as a social science? Now, communication influences culture. If we are going to do an ethnographic research today, we have to see. Now, ethnographic research is basically conducted by anthropologists where they go in a particular area, sit in the area, study the different effects of culture which takes place. So the influences of culture is <coughs> studied via communication. So it brings insights about the reorientation in the social and behavioral discipline through a greater involvement in China for uh, with culture, sorry. So for example, in China, we know that the Chinese community has a long history of wars. The Chinese community is very apt in the production of things which has led to a great boom in economy of not only China but in other countries as well. Now how do you see the reorientation? So uh, you see the Chinese community in Kolkata, you see the Chinese community in Assam. Now these are proper uh, inhabitants of China who has been staying in Kolkata for generations altogether. So you need to study how the reorientation has taken place. So how do you do that? You communicate your thought process that say Calcutta is predominantly a Bengali speaking community. Now how in Calcutta is a Chinese community thriving there. Or for example, you have little India or you have little Italy. Now Hong Kong, Singapore and all, how do these people reorient themselves with the existing traditions? For example, Malaysia is a country where almost 50% of the Malaysians are Muslims. But even in that country, the Ramayana plays a very important role. Now what, how is the Ramayana, which is a primal text of the Hindus is being utilized in the Chinese, in the Malaysian society. Now, you have temples in Malaysia dedicated to Rama, dedicated to Sita. Now, this is essential because of the process of communication and, and social science. Now what is happening here is you are reorienting yourself in the
social and behavioral disciplines through a greater involvement with the culture. Now, culture is enacted through communication. Ramayana is an Indian text. It's an Indian mythological text. Now, this sacred text of the Indians, it's strange that the Ramayana finds a primal place of importance in Malaysia. Now, how is it true? It is said that Kandali, the sage Kandali, had created his version of the Ramayana, Ramayana which got propagated amongst the Malaysian inhabitants. So, what is happening is, through your culture, one culture, you are communicating it to the other culture and they are assimilating and adapting to that culture. Now, cultural communication scholars study how cultures are performed and expressed through communication. Now, you have Center for Ramayana Studies in Malaysia, but there is only one Center for Ramayana Studies in JNU, but even that is non-existent now. So, what is happening here is through cultural communication, you are understanding how different cultures are performed. In Malaysia, even now, you have the theatrical representations of the Ramayana. And how it is expressed? It is expressed through the modes of communication. Now, in Malaysia, the Malaysian ministry uses the uh, modes of CDs where Comparing it with their king, they come out with their own version of Malaysia, a uh, uh, Malaysian Ramayana. So that is how it is. So it also helps communication students to try and discover how individuals use their own space to resist dominant society. So even if Malaysia is a Muslim dominated society, yet individuals through their usage of the other cultures are finding ways and means to resist and bring in newer ideas to the already existing dominant discourse. So, communication as a social science, if we see, is essential because it lets us go beyond what is imminent in the culture. So, you are not only seeing the various modes by which you revamp and manipulate and present a particular idea to one society. But what you're doing here is you are also performing your own will and agency in the dissemination of the knowledge process. The need for communication is now being discussed here. Why do you need to communicate in the first place at all? It always feels good to be silent. However, we do need to communicate to change behavior. So to change a mindset, to change a particular stream of thought, we need to communicate our share of ideas with them to get action. For example, uh, in order to see a sanitation program being implemented quickly in the rural areas, you need to see how efficiently you can communicate from the panchayat level up to the highest central level so that it gets quickly implemented. So action is essential. Change of behavior, it is necessary for people to understand that good sanitation is a key to good living, which is why you have government endorsing projects like Swachh Bharat Abhiyan and all. So it's essential. Now, this process will lead you to the factor of understanding. It is very important that you understand why certain ideas are being communicated. If you are strong enough to refute the idea, go ahead, critique it. But you need to 
start the process first and of course you need to persuade people now good communication also lies in the quality of persuasion that is how you manipulate people to think in the way you are thinking so if a dominant thought process exists it also depends on how you do away with the dominant thought process and let people give in to your ideas then to give and get information now giving and getting information is the most vital part of any communication because if you are communicating something it implies you are giving you are receiving you are imparting the knowledge so this is why you need to communicate you need to communicate because you need to change the behavior you need to change the misunderstandings you need to change the mindset you need to get away or do away with an existing old idea so that you can bring in newer ideas you need to communicate in order to get action you need to get, communicate to get proper policy making decisions being taken in your favor you need to communicate well so that there is a solid implementation of what you wish to implement for the betterment of the socio economic and political upbringing improvement of the country then you need to communicate to ensure an understanding occurs between party a and b persuasion is important because only when you effectively communicate you can effectively persuade the person to give in to what you are trying to make the person understand and this process continues because only if you communicate only then will you get a response to your stimulus so communication is essential for the organic running of the exchange process of knowledge now why do you need a good communication firstly in organizational and functional areas you need good communication because greater information access and awareness is essential so in organizational areas the more information you get the more aware you are the more sensible way can you pass on the information then it improves coordination why because it will reduce the logical gap now for example if my organization is going into a loss now what will i do is a uh, true and organizational and functional process i will try to find out why my organization is going into a loss so so begin with i will try to gain better information by talking to my workers by talking to my employers so if i am entrusted with the duty of why a particular product is failing in the market first i talk with the employers and find out reasons why it's not working then i talk with the workers and find out what is going in the delivery of the product why is the product not being manufactured up to the mark then i will see the logical gaps probably the demand for the product is more but what is happening is i do not have the infrastructure or i do not have the proper working conditions in which my workers can work so the logical gap is reduced when you communicate properly then it encourages cooperation when everyone is giving you inputs on how to go about with a new process or why you are lacking in a certain process you know where your loopholes are you can bounce back you can correct the loopholes
you are aware of the pros and cons of certain methods which are directly contributing to the loss of revenue so you can do away with it it helps to bring everyone in the mainstream so everyone is quipping in their ideas and you are generating information in a newer level so basically it will give you a sense of direction to the tasks and activities that you plan to undertake it also helps in boosting up your morale so if now you're saying that 100 products cannot be produced by two persons now that the problem has been communicated openly the logical decision is to now get in more employees it will generate empowerment and employment as well so you will empower that your uh, grievances are heard of and taken care of so now you focus on working well on your shortcomings now what is happening as a result it is speeding up your organizational process so the production is getting a boost here then you can focus better on the customers requirement so if a hundred products are required in the market at that point of time with the pop proper implementation of technology with a proper implementation of more employees now with the added infrastructure you are able to produce 150 items so you focus on better customer requirements then it generates a greater sense of organizational commitment and involvement so you become clubbed in that you become goal driven i have to produce 150 products a day so that there is no shortage and if necessary we have extra products to meet the estimated 100 requirement a day then with all of these decision making aids what you're doing you are in turn bringing a clarity you are bringing a preciseness in your uh, process so you have happy customers now how will you know your customers are happy you will get the feedback and it will be also well reflected in your revenue you'll have an increased revenue that itself will be a feedback that now you have started working in a proper channel given that you chose to communicate the shortcomings in a proper manner and that has led to your strengths now what is the characteristics of a good communication now a good communication should be clear and concise so in a communication you cannot keep on uh, babbling a huge amount of data or information no one is interested so you should keep it short or concise and clear it should be accurate so accuracy is very important you do not need irrelevant facts in your data what you are looking for is a accurate understanding of the problem through a good communication method then you should see that the communication which you are imparting goes with the needs of the receiver so i if i want a news on what is happening with say uh, the current uh, sensex i you should only give me that information unnecessary going into gst and demonetization will not aid in the process now it should be timely whatever is asked for in that accurate time you need to deliver then 
communication should be meaningful now meaningful does not imply that you are having a philosophical conversation but meaningful implies that you are exactly using what is asked for and you are delivering relevant materials only then it should be applicable to the situation no one appreciates out of context material so if i am here to communicate to you about the good effects of communication or how to carry out a good inform uh, communication then instead of doing that if i keep on telling you on what i did today where i went today how i did today then it's of no use so you should know when you communicate something your ideas needs to be clear crystal clear your conception should be concise and precise and it should be accurate it should be relevant to the needs of the receiver timely meaningful and always always applicable to the situation now this is how basically a communication process takes place so you have the source the encoding channel decoding receiver feedback and context now if we broadly see this context is the topic i'll go into all of these in details but broadly if you see context is the topic overall topic in which your communication process is now being carried out so you start with the source and the source will give the message to the encoder the encoder will encode the message send it through a channel the ch in the channel the message will go to the decoder who will decode it then post decoding the message it will go to the receiver now once the receiver receives the message then the receiver will send a feedback to the source so this is how a typical communication process usually takes place now what is source in communication now source in communication implies why to communicate why do you need to communicate is the first question which source deals with that is is it essential to pass on that idea or not that is seen through your source now what to communicate is an important question that needs to be addressed through your sources in communication now the usefulness of the communication and the accuracy of the information to be communicated for example i am running a packaging company now i need to communicate to the packaging company that if i am supposed to uh pack 500 items in a day i am able to pack only 250 now what should i communicate before what should i communicate why to communicate is because i have to communicate that something is wrong with the overall process hence the target of 500 is not being achieved now what to communicate is here where i will decide to say that 50% of the target is not being met because of the certain difficulties which goes in the production process now usefulness of the communication now to malign someone i might simply make a fleeting communication that okay uh i'm just saying out of my own observation that probably 250 items are being produced but probably that not might be the case so usefulness of communication is that it will now come under the scanner as to 
is it really happening is it is there really a lack of 500 uh, out of the 500 targeted products is this really happening that only 250 products are being passed in a single day now how accurate can be you can take a source of your stocks now the stocks can be verified and the shortage can be seen via your logbooks and all now this entire process goes in the first half of your message that you have thought of communicating the message regarding the shortage of packaging package products from your targeted amount of package products now encoding encoding is what the process of transferring the information you want to communicate into a form that can be sent and correctly decoded at the other end now production is decreasing now out of 500 packages of intended products i am only producing 250 products now encoding is the process by which i will let the different hierarchies of the organization know that this is what is happening so i'll begin by communicating it to the laborers and i'll start asking them that is it true how many uh, products are you packaging in a single day so if they tell me that only uh, five to six products we are packaging in a single day i need to accurately check how many laborers are there now if 100 laborers are there and each laborer is producing five package items a day somehow it is meeting my requirement of 500 now this set of information will go to the foreman the the foreman will report to the supervisor the supervisor will again decode the message and send it to the managers and the ceo and directors so what is happening here is you are encoding the message shortage of packet samples you are you are using your ability to confirm the information that there is a shortage and we need to find out solution on how to overcome the shortage then you eliminate sources of confusion for example cultural issues if there is a cultural bridge between the workers and the higher officers of the organization you need to bridge that with the effective uh, communication and bring your entire organization together mistaken assumptions what if you just need 100 products a day and at the rate of 250 it is going quite well then missing information why is the product not being sent so after a analysis if you are finding out that production is happening for 500 but why is only 250 reaching the market and 250 where does it go so if it's kept lost in the go down or something you need to tally it and find out now this is where you need to know your audience whom you are engaging with and in what level so that the proper information is conveyed up to the decoding level <coughs> now the channels of communication now how will you communicate this shortcoming you can write your letters to the concerned department send them memos that to the laborer you send the memo that why is uh, the targeted 10 items not being packaged and why are you producing five so you send memos then you send proposals to the higher authorities stating that if we implement say a better logistics if we implement on better infrastructure probably we can 
upgrade of production. You write your reports, you give a presentation, you show them your shortcomings, why is the lack happening, how you can overcome it. So you give a basic overall scenario of the problem. You can send emails, keep people updated, send SMS so that people report on time and the packaging doesn't get delayed. Instant messaging, just in case you need someone to check the quality and all. Then tweets so that the marketing is carried out in a proper process. Then of course you do have meetings where you call in the group of people and discuss the shortcomings. You conduct telephonic conversations with the head office and you conduct video conferencing in the mall so you know how people are actually being receptive towards your product. So all of these would go into your channels of communication. Now decoding process. Now how will you decode it? First you need to listen actively to the problem that is being detected and passed on or communicated to you. Then you need to read the information carefully. You need to gauge whether out of the predicted 500 packaging products, do you actually need 500 package products in a day or not? Then you ask questions for better understanding. So what you do here is in order to reduce the confusion, you ask questions in crucial levels so you get more inputs, more insights and then from there you carry on. What will happen as a result of which you will avoid and reduce the unnecessary confusion. Now, the act of the receiver in the communication process. So what does the receiver do in the communication process? The receiver is the person who already has an idea about the ongoing communication which is happening. So in order to get a correct opinion firstly the receiver should act neutral now the receiver who already has a prior information or knowledge he can again influence the understanding of the message so if the sender is saying that we are having a shortage of 250 package items and if the receiver is from the other party then if he has a prior information that an inquiry might get conducted, he might simply give conflicting views. So it's very essential that the receiver of the uh, message do, does not create any blockages. The surrounding disturbances or the inquiry process, which is happening in this case of the package items, the disturbances can also lead to barriers in the overall communication process. So the receiver should be neutral and accept the information as sent by the sender. So the receiver should keep his interpretations of the same as another level and he should simply accept what is being said in the first sentence. Now, what is a context? The sender needs to communicate the context to the receiver for a better quality and clarity in the overall communication process. So, what does the sender do? If a sender has to communicate certain ideas to the receiver, he will make sure that the um, message that is passed on is accurate, concise, clear, is relevant and it has a meaning and accuracy. Now the context will basically include situations, for example, the introduction of the problem, the sales pitch, the conflict 
and exam etc then you have different cultures now academic culture corporate culture international culture regional etc then language is important and for the context to be made known then you need to have a location or a place where the con uh, communication can take place for example can take place in a restaurant it can take place in an office it can take place in the classroom and so on now what is the feedback once the message is passed on you get the feedback or the response from the receiver so feedback can be verbal feedback can be non verbal feedback can be a written feedback feedback can be positive and negative now verbal feedbacks are verbally or orally communicated then you have non verbal feedbacks the non verbal feedbacks are not orally communicated you have written feedbacks then you have a positive feedback which is all praises for your product or you might have a negative feedback now what are the essentials of a good communication so in order to have a good communication process you should take care of the essentials of a good communication so basically you should always think ahead about what you are going to say there is a proverb which says that the tongue has no bones at all but it can break a thousand parts in a second that is what you are going to say will have a direct impact on the person who is receiving your information so you should always think ahead what you're going to say you need to practice rehearse pre plan it and then you need to always think before you speak then use simple words and phrases that are understood by everybody now if i use a very difficult word say um do not of obfuscate me with your silly ideas now obfuscate simply implies do not confuse me with your silly ideas now when i use the word obfuscate instead of asking them not to obfuscate it more for me i am asking i am in turn obfuscating it more for them so you need to use simple words and phrases that everyone understands you need to increase your knowledge on all subjects you are required to speak so if you are going for a lecture or say uh one hour you need to prepare for a material which you can go on for say 120 minutes that is you should always build up your knowledge database you should be aware of the context and situation you are dealing with you should be aware of the older insights and you should always be able to contribute by giving newer insights then you should need to speak clearly and audibly so clearly if i speak uh gibberish like uh Oh, I don't know what I was speaking and all. Now, are you able to understand it? No. So you need to speak clearly, and you should be audible enough. Now, if I speak too loudly, you might not be able to hear me. So miscommunication will happen through that process. Then check twice with the listener whether you have been understood accurately or not. now checking twice doesn't imply saying it directly to the listener check one check two no checking implies the mental reconfiguration you make within yourself to assert and justify that your message is being thoroughly understood by the receiver 
so which is why you have people when they are trying to explain to you a certain point they ask am i clear or am i making sense or they use fillers like correct me if i'm wrong so why are they using this they are using because they are doing a mental check on whether you are being focused enough to listen to what they are saying and also by you quipping in with your own critical interruptions you are making it clear that the listener is with you then in case of an interruption always do a little recap of what has been already said some people have a tendency to interpret so for example you saying something and somebody wants to say something at an equally equal place so what happens is either the communication is lost or your thought process is lost so how do you bounce up with that either you say allow me to complete or give me one minute no if i can complete it that is how you do it or you begin with where was i or what are we talking so these are fillers which you use in the language to form the connection between your communication now always pay undivided attention to the speaker while listening if you pay proper attention or focus to the listener then this situation doesn't arise so you should always give a full on a uh, attention to the speaker while you are listening to the thought process of the speaker then while listening always make it a point to note important points so if a person is talking about say the introduction of a new curriculum in the existing curriculum so you need to pick up on the important points of curriculum making during your conversation itself so that you can give in your own input and output now always ask for a clarification if you have failed to grasp the other's point of view so if you fail to understand what the other person is saying to you you can always get back to the person and ask him or her to clarify or to repeat what they have already said so what happens is in that process not only you do away with the errors in the communication process but you also have a better understanding of the other person's point of view then repeat what the speaker has said to check whether you have understood accurately so another good way of continuing a conversation without offending the other person is repeating so you can use fillers in your conversation like okay so this is what i get or this uh, this is what i can think of or interpret by what you're trying to say or you can say okay let me repeat what you have said or please see whether i've understood it clearly or not so these fillers will again help you to assert the fact that you have understood what the speaker has said so these are the basic essentials of a good communication because only when you think what you are about to say can you give a clear idea then when you use simple words everybody understands you when you know the topic you are about to speak when you have prior knowledge then you cannot be influenced and you deliver exactly what relevant data is asked of you then when you speak clearly and audibly not only you do away with the problem of the listener not understanding you accurately but you also enable a two way process where you yourself can ask a recap of the things which were discussed prior to get a clear picture then 
when you give undivided attention to the speaker while listening a mutual process of respect is formed between the two persons and then it also helps you to make mental notes and when you do not understand a person's point of view and you seek for clarification not only do you get a better graph of what the person is trying to say to you but also while repeating you do away with the uh, wrong interpretations that you might be carrying or you tend to do away with any fallacies in your statements now these are the precautions you should take during communication do not instantly react and mutter something in anger so if someone tells you today that uh okay you are being very lazy i do not know why you cannot study two chapters in a day so clearly if you explain them why you are not able to study two chapters in a day that will be more useful than you saying oh get lost you don't know what i go through and you just mutter something and you go away or you just say okay mind your own business i don't feel the need to explain to you why i am not able to study two chapters a day so you need to do away with all of that now do not use technical terms and terminology is not understood by a majority of the people communication should be crisp and clear communication should not be high handed communication should not be technical and filled with terminologies unless asked through there should be a linkage between the facts you are trying to communicate it should be short simple accurate concise and easily understandable but do not speak too fast or too low i don't want to speak or oh. i'm too busy to speak if you understand it's okay if you don't understand that's none of my concern what is happening here i am not able to communicate my ideas to you properly now do not speak in inaudible surroundings as you won't be heard probably you need to have noise free rooms where you can shut yourself and continue speaking or probably you should when you receive a call and you are midway of something in the road you should let the other person know that you will call the other person once you get back and so on do not assume that everybody understands you now this is a problem which we uh, find specifically teachers do have this problem because they have already attained their knowledge now what is happening here is teachers always have the tendency to skip concepts and directly go to the crux of the problem now in doing so not only are we undermining our listeners abilities but we are also making the com learning process difficult due to the lack of communication so if a student is scared of approaching me probably there will be a miscommunication and that would reflect in the bad result so communication is very important ask us till you get through the core of the subject now while listening do not glance here and there as it might distract the speaker there are times when you see people uh speaking but when you listening you are very distracted so you might be fidgeting looking at your phone looking at your watch and uh looking here and there so the in the process both are losers because even the speaker is getting distracted and even the listener is not properly grasping the ideas that he should grasp or the listener is just not able to give the respect to the speaker and the speaker loses interest and it completely outdoes the process of communication so do not jump to the conclusion that you have understood everything 
there can be a number of interpretations and engagement to get a perfect communication done. So you should be very cautious with all of that. Now, what are the different aspects of communication? Now, this communication is clear. The sender sends the message, encoder encodes the message. It gets transferred through the channel. The channel will pass on the message. Decoding happens. Receiver receives it and you get the feedback. Now, all of these will have certain hidden aspects. So the first aspect is language. Now, language is expressed through speech and writing. That is your oral communication and your written communication. Other than that, you have paralanguage. Now, through paralanguage, you have kinesis. Then, you have tone and character of voice, your various intonations, proxenes, that is the space you provide between a person, the level or distance you maintain with someone. For example, one hand distance would be something uh, for very close people. Probably they might hug each other. If one hand distance implies you're not comfortable with the person, so you maintain a general one hand distance and so on for sometimes you keep two hand or three hand distance with people with whom you do not want to directly communicate so you're better saying a hi or a hello from far off so that goes into your proximus then your clothing your makeup your appearance then chronotop the time behavior everything plays an important role in your communication process now what is the relation between communication and language? Now, language is a system for communication where through language, people share their experiences, concerns, beliefs, etc. So language is basically the medium through which your communication process is taking place. So, it is through language you are expressing your idea to the people. So, if today I am conveying certain ideas to you, it is because I am conveying it in a language you are familiar with. So, I am conveying it in the English language because English as a mode of instruction is understood by all so language is the system where you communicate your experiences your concerns your beliefs the knowledge impartial process actually happens through the use of language now spoken languages uses sounds and rules for putting the sounds together so every language will have a linguistic breakup where your diphthongs, monophthongs, your various vowels, consonants, the sounds and all will be clearly written and how those sounds are made. For example, you have uh, say pa, 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 ma. So it's from the lips. You have ka. That sound is from your epiglottis. So there are various rules. Then you have click. These are with the help of your tongue. So you use that. Then sign languages uses gestures rather than sound. So if a deaf and mute person has to communicate, he will use the sign language. So basically through the sign language, you are able to communicate what you want to communicate. Then you have your gestures or the hand movements. If I ask you to shut up, right? So my putting the to the thumb and my index finger, brushing it against my lips implies that I am asking you to shut up. So similarly, you use gestures, your hand to stop, then uh, 
waving to say bye then so on so you you use gestures or your hand signals every day then language aids communication by expressing the thought process and behavior by predisposing people to see the world in a certain way so what language basically does is it touches the heart of the others your thought process your behavior everything will have an impact on the other individual and it is only through language that you are capable of putting that thought process in a world in a certain way now the right to communicate the right to communicate has been declared as a fundamental right by a united nations charter now you have right to information also now so if you uh, the rti act that was passed way back in 2005 so if you need to know certain information you have the rti act now so communication is important and that is recognized even by the uh, international community worldwide so united nations charter has officially come out with this right to communicate as one of your fundamental rights then it is the basic right of an individual and it extends to groups so the individual will communicate within himself that individual communication will be uh interpersonal in nature with uh two persons being involved that would extend to groups groups would extend to nations then international communities and this will in turn have legal economic and technological implications for example if you are living in a fragment of the world where proper medical medical aids are not being sent to your part of the world so you have the right to communicate it across the world why you see it as a shortcoming in your part of the world and how that can be implemented for example if you are seeing the ill effects of deforestation you have the right to communicate it to the entire world that because of the rampant cutting of trees there is a huge difference in the overall ecological structure of the world so you have the right to pass on the information through groups to nations make people aware of it and make the necessary important legal economic and technological amendments which are necessary to do away with the process of deforestation now when we come to theories of communication indians has their own theories of communication so when we study theories of communication usually we come across Aristotle's theory of communication where he talks about speech how one person says something that message is passed and the receiver understands it but in india we use the concept of sadharanikaran that is sadharanikaran is sadharanikaran implies simplification without dilution now sadharanikaran will have two segments that is sahridaya that is one heart for everything you share your compassion with everyone every individual in this world will have according to the indian theory of communication will share the concept of sahridaya or compassion or unity they will empathize they will sympathize and so on so in the indian context the process of communication will have shared compassion 
then you will also have a response this is your stimulus this is your response now responses i'll deal in detail in the next slide but responses are the emotions or the emotional response so which is why you have the concept of the navarasas or the nine emotions and usually the rasas or the emotions nine of them will denote a particular emotion for example you have emotions like hasya bhaya karuna karuna is sorrow hasya is laughter bhaya is fear so like that you have eight rasas uh, then you get a collective response which is universalization so the sadharanikaran or simplification sadharan if you see the sanskritization of this word sadharan is what ordinary something which is general something which is known so that should be the sole purpose of communication the idea should be pushed in a way that it is sadharan it becomes general everyone gets the idea it becomes clear lucid it gets disseminated properly so sadharanikaran the entire process goes into it now the simplification without dilution of the essence then you have your compassion one and all and ek naam sat naam or what you say your empathy and all then your rasta and this is the universal response which you get now how do you undergo the process of sadharanikaran or generalization of the message without dilution now sadharanikaran begins with addressing the emotions and emotional response now this includes your shared compassion as a core approach now shared compression or sahridaya is what is the basic core approach of the sadharanikaran process there you have your rasa which will address the emotions and give you appropriate emotional response to the message which you communicate so you simplify the content and you get the messages without any dilution it includes appeals for collective response for example if you want to communicate the idea that child marriage should be stopped in the indian society so you take the concept of sadharanikaran or the simplification of the ill effects of the child marriage so you basically deal with the who pratha of child marriage you share a compassion that a girl is not able to take on the burdens of the family until she is 18 years of age your rasa or emotion the emotion of the girl the emotion of the parents the groom and the overall society whether they are against child marriage or whether they are for child marriage everything is also so what happens is the collective appeal which you make for abolition of child marriage so that collective response is collected and you have sahadriya that is one heart that it should be stopped so you empathize with everyone's pain and you see it as one whole problem with one heart now rasa was actually a uh, first classified by bharata muni in his treatise on art the performing art called natya shastra now natya shastra is basically a complete treatise or text on how a performing art should take place so in natya shastra you have the nav rasas nav means nine so navarasas means the nine emotions 
now these nine emotions are again divided into positive emotions and negative emotions now the positive emotions could that be of love joy peace courage or pathos and the negative emotions could be that of fear that of anger that of disgust now you manifest your energy in your prana or the soul in your unconscious self now rasa can be classified as the juice or the essence of the soul so in rasa you can also if you take the entire human body you can compare it to your blood plasma that is the being of being you what you are made of your complete essence now rasa sadhana is a way of bringing unconscious emotions into consciousness and gaining mastery of them by emotional fasting unconscious emotions into your consciousness so your anger your lust your love your disgust your joy everything you tend to bring it to your consciousness through acts of meditation through acts of dance and you gain mastery of them through emotional fasting that is you exercise your will you exercise your self control if you are angry you tend to walk out of that situation you wait you test your patience level and with the notion of sahadriya or compassion what you do you control your rasa or your emotions and without diluting or simplifying you simply give the message so this is the indian theory of communication of sadhari nikaran where with the, the notions of sahadriya and rasa you go for a universal response that is that of sadharni karan which is simplification of the message without dilution of it now we come to the basic types of communication now based on communication channels and based on style and purpose communication is divided into the following types so based on channel you have verbal and non verbal communication verbal communication might again be oral and written in nature then uh, you have formal and informal communication based on your style and purpose it can also be focused and unfocused modes of communication where in focused mode you are actually engaging on a one on one basis conversation whereas in unfocused conversation for example if you are in a marriage party now in unfocused conversation probably by gesture you might greet it but it necessarily does not mean that you are addressing the entire gathering so that is the unfocused mode of communication which is also informal in nature now we come to verbal communication or the oral communication now all forms of speech between a sender and receiver goes through an oral mode of communication the oral mode of communication will never leave any permanent or retrievable record of the message unless it is recorded so what i am telling you right now unless it has been recorded the oral communication is of no use more effective than written when trying to affect receiver's opinion on some matter so if i need to get a prompt response i can simply use my phone and convey my ideas and immediately get the other response then non verbal communication can affect the final interpretation of the message so uh in verbal communication basically you will say anything but it's not permanent in nature it cannot be retrieved unless it is recorded and it is more effective when you need quick response to the stimulus that you are providing now 
verbal communication now any form of handwriting printed memo or report the memos which you send a good memo or a bad memo then your handwriting and your report where you document say you conduct a research study and you're documenting something the report which you send all of these goes to your verbal communication it includes messages which are sent over an electronic medium then the receiver's response is more delayed in written than in oral communication for example if i have to take a class today simply orally probably i can deliver it fast but if i have to write and draw and explain it to you it is prolonged and it will take time so that is how the process of communication will get delayed then receiver must first read the message before interpreting and responding to it <coughs> the receiver the person who reads the message he should first read it as it comes before interpreting or critiquing the message now we come to modes of non verbal communication so non verbal communication can be oral and non oral messages expressed by other linguistic means so in non verbal communication it is usually ambiguous in nature it is not clear non verbal communication many times can be unintentional for example if you blink uh, something gets into your eye and you try to blink it and it sends a non verbal uh, unintentional message that you are winking at a girl so you might end up with a blue eye so it's unintentional it's ambiguous it has a stronger impact than verbal message that winking itself can lead to a whole set of consequences it is impacted by gender race culture etc and it follows norms or rules that is it follows systems and totems now these are your types of non verbal communication so non verbal communication is again divided into vocal and paralinguistic phenomena and non vocal phenomena now in vocal phenomena you have individual vocal characteristics that is your voice type or your voice quality high quality voice low quality voice and so on melody you lay emphasis on the key the stress the intonation the shrillness and so on and then speech rate your rhythm your pauses your tempo then the form of articulation could be whispering sounds could be the sight sounds like laughter sounds and so on then you have non vocal phenomena here you have kinesis you have physical reactions and outward appearance now kinesis will again be divided into macro kinesis and micro kinesis and the macro kinesis you have movement of body parts that is your gestures your head movements your touching behavior and so on then in the movement of entire body you have your posture you slouch you move or you stand straight and maintain a proper posture then you have distance the distance you maintain between individual so same is which i was talking about earlier then again in micro kinesis you have facial expression a frown might imply you are annoyed a sniffle or a giggle might say that you are happy then direction of gaze a stern gaze you know if your mother looks at you sternly in a public place you are dead by the time you come home so direction of your gaze is very important gazes can not be inappropriate we always find people complaining about inappropriate gazes and so on then in the physical reactions you have blushing if you are embarrassed about something you blush there's a flush of redness across your cheeks or you go pale 
if you're tense, you're worried, you act and you make, you become very pale or off-white. Then your outward appearance, your physical characteristics, the clothes you wear, and so on, will convey the message it wants to communicate. For example, if I'm taking a class, I cannot come dressed in casuals because it will send a wrong message to my students. Or if I am about to uh, take part in a particular activity, I need to be appropriately dressed. For example, you cannot go into a swimming pool wearing a sari. You need your proper swimming ensemble. So that is how we see the nonverbal communication. Now we come to intrapersonal communication. Now, communication that occurs within oneself is the intrapersonal communication. Now, it is the internal dialogue occurring within the mind. It is the process of talking to oneself. It plays vital roles in determining our self-esteem and perception. It also creates a situation of self-assertion and willpower. Meditation, prayer, visualization, affirmations are some interpersonal techniques. So in intrapersonal techniques, what you do, you communicate within oneself, your shortcomings. It is more divinic in nature. There's an element of divinity. You meditate, you Thing, you go into an entire pensive mode because you are talking to oneself and intrapersonal communication is essential because it helps you know your weaknesses, your strengths, how you deal in a particular situation and so on. For example, uh, you have coaches who tell you, do not look back whatever situation you face in. So when you are facing, say you are a doctor, you are operating in a surgery, and you know that if you look behind, the other co-doctors might think that you are not adept in the surgery. So you make an interpersonal connection that my coach had said that I should never look behind whatever be the circumstances, and I should face it bravely. So that is interpersonal communication. You are talking to yourself within yourself and creating a situation where you exercise your assertion, willpower, and agency. Now, what are the factors that affect intrapersonal communication? The perspective is one important factor. The perspective is the way we look at things. So our understanding of how we look into particular things will be determined by our perception towards it. For example, uh, the knowledge and understanding that you already have in your mind will let you know about the formation of certain paradigms, the philosophies which you have. So the way you think about certain things forms your perspectives in life. Now, positive thoughts will produce positive perspectives in life. So the festival of holy is, say, approaching. So if you have positive thoughts of merrymaking, spending time with your family, uh, letting loose on that day, so it produces positive perspective in your life. Now, positive perspective will produce positive action you will actively take part in the festival and what will happen is positive perspectives will create positive communication and interpersonal relationship so when your intrapersonal relationship is strong only then you will be able to create a good interpersonal that is two person relationship then comes the factor of self esteem now, self-esteem is how we look at ourselves. So we can look at ourselves in a positive manner. We can look at ourselves in a negative manner. So they form the strength and weakness of us individuals. Now, with appreciating our capabilities or undermining ourselves, we form our self-esteem. Then the feeling that... I'm going to succeed in something or I'm going to fail in something will also be affected in the self-esteem. 
then you have factors like your self confidence or self assertiveness now how does self confidence or self assertiveness helps in the communication process so self confidence helps us to take actions which are based on our perceptions and the values that we hold so having a self confidence is important because it is only through your self confidence that you are able to present yourself to your world and communicate your ideas better the self assertiveness is the capacity to take a stand and take appropriate actions in defending perspectives and positive values which you strongly believe so self assertiveness is the capability to take a stand if you think it's a wrong you should be assertive enough to say it's wrong if you want to defy the system you need to first make sure that you're following the rules correctly so assertiveness is the quality where you yourself assertion whether you want to go with that thought or you want to walk away from that thought process now we come to the components of interpersonal communication now interpersonal communication is communication between a and b now here you have the art of conversation listening body language environment and self appearance now what happens in your conversation how do you conduct a conversation now when you conduct a conversation you mention the people's name you use <coughs> suitable modes of language your tone of voice will also affect the quality of con uh, conversation you should simplify your message give the other people chance to talk and you should not control their uh, co uh conversation at all then you should try to control from telling a lot about yourself you should let the other person speak then you should use closed and open ended questions properly the contents of your sentence should be clear suitability of topics to talk should always be addressed to and you should know how to win people's hearts when you conduct a conversation now how do you converse properly so conversation when you are striking a conversation with someone it is important that you are confident you are cool you are relaxed you are just being yourself you do not belittle yourself but at the same time you are not being arrogant and you must show respect to the concerned parties then you need to be assertive you should not let other people step on your head and you should give opinions and if you don't agree with full diplomacy and tact and respect you should pass on what you trying to convey now listening skills are very important when a person is saying something you should listen to what the person is trying to say so when you listen you should look into the eyes of the person and give them proper attention but do not do it for too close or too long you should show your interest and show that the person who is speaking to you is important you should concentrate you should not let your mind wander you should show that you are actually listening to them do not look into different directions and show that you really understand what the person is saying by doing cross question then it is important to ask whether the person is trying to say what so you cross check you give encouragement for people to keep on talking or to tell you more phrases such as that's an amazing idea that's an interesting story and so on so you listen to their ideas not just to words that way and you form your own imagination during the process 
you should not be very fast or you should not conclude abruptly and you should not focus on what you are going to say when you are listening you should always allow the other person to say first now your body language is very important your smile how or you show your happy face it shows that you are having a positive body language now mirroring is a habit we all have mirror neurons in our body so mirroring is the habit by which you imitate a person's body language unconsciously so in mirroring you create the same body texture and if they are standing with you with one leg up you and if they are holding the cup you do the same so but you need to avoid yawning scratching your head and doing anything inappropriate then these are the types of body language you have sound ways of talking posture slouching appearance untidiness head movements example nodding hand movements example waving eye movements winking facial expression with profound body contact and so on then the environment in which you are trying to pass an information is very essential look for suitable places where you can conduct your communication the appearance or your mannerisms in which you dress is very important a clumsy unkept appearance will have a indirect uh, message on the way you are trying to communicate then you need to be clean crisp proper your ornaments your body smell and so on should be taken care of now we are done with intrapersonal communication now we have interpersonal communication where the communication is happening between a uh, two individuals so basically there are three stages the phatic stage the personal stage and the intimate stage now what happens in the phatic stage in phatic stage you use conventional messages to establish your ideas for example you might hug kiss shake hands and you might just exchange pleasantries now cliches are overused expression for example uh when we see someone we simply ask hello how are you i'm fine hi paper or plastic thanks for coming you're welcome so that is phatic communication then we have the personal stage of communication it introduces a personal element in the conversation so during this period we generally lower our social guard and take the risk of exposing ourselves so having moved at this stage we are more likely to talk to others about the health profession family etc but you see that these kind of communications usually do not happen in business settings or professional environment no one is interested in your personal life so this is the kind of communication where after the phatic stage where after you are done with your ice breaking session you get comfortable you discuss your ideas but you do not get into it overall then the last stage is the intimate stage now in the intimate stage now this stage is reserved for friends and relatives now there's a degree of intimacy in this stage now what happens in this stage is you are done with your high uh, hellos exchanging of pleasantries your relationship is no longer stuck to your professional domain you are no longer formal then your degree of closeness is there and it is a stage where all social barriers fall apart you are comfortable then uh, in this stage you reveal your innermost thoughts joys and weakness now where do you see this stage you see it with your friends you see it with your family and in intimate stage it is reserved for communication based on a deep union of understanding so you need to understand one another so with this we come to the end of the introductory session of mass communication where we have learned about 
what is communication the different modes of communication the types of communication the indian theories of communication and most importantly we have learned about the needs and characteristics of a good communication and the various stages of interpersonal and intrapersonal relationship so thank you once again